So welcome back you guys. I'm going to lead you through this little ladybug tutorial today. So you can see I'm working on Fabriano cold press, 140 pounds. And these are the supplies you'll need. I've just got four colors, black ink, and some white gouache. So starting out the drawing, I'm just going to go for the biggest shapes first. And he's got kind of an oval shaped body. And then another little oval half, and another little oval half, and that is the little ladybug head. So I make two little antennas, and he's got some white spots on the side there, and two white spots that kind of look like eyeballs on the top of his head. Then you can give a little split for the wings, and these guys have six little legs coming out, and he's standing up, so I've got them bent in these shapes. Now the side legs kind of go under the body a little bit and then stick out on the sides. And then he's got little hind legs at the back. So I do all my drawing, just kind of scribble drawing and not worrying about erasing anything. I just keep moving the pencil around until the shapes look right. Now I'll come in with the ink and do all the fine tuning by picking out the best shapes. And I'm going to use this ink to just color over all the dark spots. Don't worry about any of the highlights yet but keep those main white shapes open. So he almost has like a little smiling mouth in the front there. So I chose to use the acrylic ink instead of just a black pen because it gives faster coverage. And it's easier to be more precise with your work when you start with one of these pens rather than just doing it all with watercolor. So ink and watercolor, always kind of a natural combination. So on his legs, I'm keeping a little bit of a highlight spot open on each one and then filling in the rest with black. So now we've got all six legs, I'll fill in his black dots all the way on his back. And then I'll just fill in that little crack in between the wings. And now for the color. So I'm going to start with the lightest color on here, which are his white spots, which are not actually white. So you can see I'm pulling in my yellow with a tiny little bit of purple, and that purple will dull down that yellow. And then just a nice soft little wash in those areas. That will make the highlights pop out even more if these whites are not fully white. 
Now I'm going to use that same purple and yellow mix and then add in a little tiny touch of alizarin and that will warm it up even more. It's kind of a warm brown color that's going on to the antennas here. And then just some straight yellow in the center. So now for the reds, start with just that warm uh, cadmium red to begin with. And I'm washing that over the whole thing with my natural brush because that one gives faster coverage. And I want this whole little area to stay wet so that I can play with it for a little bit. So cover that whole thing with just the one color. Now I'll go for the deeper, cooler red, which is the alizarin. And make sure you don't have too much water on your brush or you will get big blossoms in there. You want it to be mostly paint. And then you can add that paint and keep charging the other color to deepen it. But you see, I'm not going over the whole thing, just going over the areas where I want it to be a little bit darker and keeping that warm orange coming through in the lighter areas. So it's a little bit darker in the center of his back and around the edges. And then to further deepen some areas, I'm going to pull in some purple into that red and get an even deeper red that way. So mostly the darks are happening around the sides and the very top middle. So now that I've got a good range of value, I want to make sure this guy is really dry. But um, first, let me add some more of that kind of brown color into those highlight areas of the legs. Now you got those little warm tones popping through. And you can see this is a lot easier to do with the ink because the acrylic is dry and it's not going to move around on you. So I'm fully dry now and the next thing I want to do is start adding the highlights and that's when I pull in the gouache. So with just a tiny, tiny little bit of the white gouache, I'll um, put the center of the highlight and then I'll clean off my brush and leave it a tiny bit damp so that I can soften the edges around it and kind of gently lift some of it up until it becomes transparent and then you are left with a beautiful shiny highlight on top of that black. Again, this is all so much easier if you just use the ink first because that black ink will stay put and it's not going to bleed into the white gouache. Now that that one's gently softened around the edges, I'll put another highlight over here on the top of his head. Now you notice I've switched to my Escoda brush. This one's a synthetic and this one's better for doing this sort of shading because it has more control with its stiffness and it doesn't hold as much water as the natural brush. So it just makes this easier. So just keep lifting and pushing it around until it looks right. And then I'll add the one big one that's on the center of his back here. So there is some red on top of the black and that is mixing into the white which is causing 
um, a little bit of pink in my white, which I don't want. But that's okay. We can just lift it off. I'm going to come back in and lift up some of that red to be part of the highlight anyway, so we'll just kind of continue this through and then add some more white back onto it. So here, I, with a clean, slightly damp brush, I just kind of scrub some of that red off of there. And then with a paper towel, clean paper towel, blot it off. And now I'll put some of that white shine back onto the black area. And then we got a nice shiny white hot spot on the top. And then the rest of these highlights that happen around the side edges, I'm just going to do the lifting technique. So just a slightly damp brush and clean paper towel to blot it off with. Now that's why you do this with lifting and applying gouache rather than using masking fluid because you won't get those nice, soft, natural looking uh, edges if you use the masking fluid. You don't want any hard edges in here. for your highlights. And now one last little trick for making it look extra real is to drop down some shadows. And I just used the purple since I already had it ready to go. And I'm putting in just a very light, delicate purple where the shadow would form and then soften the edges with the damp brush right after you apply the paint. So you don't want hard edges on these shadows. And that's about it for this guy. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.